Now, in this module, let's continue with the topic of gonadal sex differentiation. Guys, please concentrate. Here, in this topic, we are mainly concentrating on how the gonads are formed. Okay? Like, you know, gonads in the sense, in the male, it is a testis and a female, it's a ovary. So, we are talking about how the gonads are differentiated. So, before going into the topic, let me be very clear that the gonadal differentiation is genetically determined. Okay? Let me write it here. Gonadal sexual differentiation is... Genetically determined. So, what does I mean by? It means that the genetics will determine the development of the gonads. What does it actually mean? See, in males, there are certain genes which will make the primitive gonads to develop into testis. And in female, there are certain genes which are helping in the formation of ovaries. Okay. So, this is the basic statement that the gonadal sexual differentiation is genetically determined. Okay. Now, let's go into the topic. During fifth week of gestation, see this is a very important timeline. During a fifth week of gestation, the primordial germ cells will move from yolk sac. See, in this diagram, it's very clear that this is yolk sac. Okay. From the yolk sac, the primordial germ cells, which are purplish in color, they are moving via dorsal mesentery to the posterior body wall. There in the posterior body wall, the primordial germ cells will stimulate the formation of longitudinal ridges. Okay. I am repeating one more time. See, during fifth week, the primordial germ cells move from yolk sac via the dorsal mesentery. Okay, via dorsal mesentery, these primordial germ cells are going to posterior body wall. Here, these primordial germ cells, they will stimulate the Coelomic epithelium, okay, let me write here. These primordial germ cells, whatever are coming, they will stimulate Coelomic epithelium, okay, they will stimulate the Coelomic epithelium to form longitudinal ridges. See, these longitudinal ridges are known as gonadal ridges. Okay. Now, who stimulates the formation of these gonadal ridges? The primordial germ cells. Where the primordial germ cells have originated? The primordial germ cells, they have originated from the yolk sac via dorsal mesentery. They have reached the posterior body wall. And these primordial germ cells, by themselves, they have stimulated the coelomic epithelium to form a longitudinal ridges known as these genital ridges. Now, see, till 6th week. Okay. So, this one all happened till 6th week. See, important timeline is time line. Till sixth week, there is indifferentiation of gonads. Indifferentiation of gonads, which means in an embryo. 
till the sixth week so you cannot differentiate whether these gonads are going to be testes or whether these gonads are going to be ovaries they are indifferentiated gonads okay they are one and the same from now onwards the presence of genes will determine the future of the gonads now let's continue see during sixth week what happens now during sixth week from here if it is a male if embryo is a male embryo okay now if the embryo is male embryo definitely we know that in this male embryo there is x chromosome as well as y chromosome now on this y chromosome there is a gene known as sry gene okay now this sry gene it will code for a transcription factor known as testis determining factor okay sry gene code for a transcription factor okay which is testis determining factor now this testis determining factor will also activate certain other autosomal genes known as sox9 gene okay they will ask you along with the sry gene what other genes can help in this testis formation that is sox9 gene which is an autosomal gene now so because of this presence of sry gene and sox9 gene see we are talking about the genetics because of presence of this genes now our genital ridges will become genital ridges will become testes okay so it's the same usually the gonads are bipotential in nature the genital ridges they are bipotential in nature if there is presence of sry gene and sox9 genes then these genital ridges will become testes now let's see in the counterpart for example if the embryo if embryo is a female okay, if the embryo is a female there is no sry gene why because there is no y chromosome no y chromosome so because of no sry gene what happens the genital ridges the genital ridges by default they will automatically gets converted into ovaries okay so genital ridges they will convert into ovaries but also remember in male the main gene which is involved in the formation of testis is sry gene along with sox9 gene but in female there is a one more a gene which helps in development of ovaries which is w n t 4 gene okay w n t 4 gene in a female helps in the formation of ovaries and simple absence of y by default will convert the genital ridges into ovaries so we have seen that differentiation of the gonads based on the genes